Y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Hello, it's your girl. Meet me in the middle. Yes, today we're going to unwind from the middle with Ebony K. Williams. Yes, honey, justice it is. That's what I'm talking about. So come on and follow me and I will meet you there. She has a lot to say. I want to thank the culture for making my interview with Dr. Ayanla Van Zant one of the most popular and actively engaged content offerings the GRIO has produced. So before I tell you my thoughts, let's replay the clip that had some of y'all deep into your feet. I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes, they're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's the problem. Now let's address the response to the interview and what some of y'all are calling a backlash. So let me be clear. First, I am a professional disruptor. So backlash is my business. And I will always take it on the chin for the sake of advancing the work, conversation, or movement. So know that I am completely unfazed by the onslaught of nasty comments wishing me a sad, lonely, bitter existence until my untimely death. Now that is some weird energy to be wishing onto a black woman, especially one who has dedicated her life to the liberation of black folk. But you know, whatever, I guess, go off. See, I wanted to talk about how do we close the gap between black women who do show up in a so-called masculine posture, those of us that are providing and building and protecting due to circumstances that we might feel make us feel that if we don't do it for ourselves, we will have to go without the resources and protections we need to feel safe in this world. But Dr. Ayanla went in a different direction. She asked me a personal question. And y'all know I have been extremely transparent about the fact that my life choices and my chosen lifestyle are far outside of the norm. So when I said that I would date the bus owner, a lot of y'all heard something different. Some of you heard the following. Bus drivers are whack. Bus drivers are broke. Oh, and I'm too good for a bus driver. The only thing is, y'all made that part up. See, I said what I said. But then some of y'all started talking about salaries and hourly wages, pensions and benefits. And that's wild because I was never talking about money at all. I was talking about black ownership, but some of y'all made it about money. I'm talking about ownership, black enterprise and entrepreneurship, because really I am talking about black liberation. And if you read my book, you'll understand why. So I'm standing ten toes down on that position, and I don't really care if you're hurt or offended by it. And since some of y'all are already big mad, let me go ahead and make you incensed. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. 
But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. Hello, thanks for meeting your girl in the middle. Yes, honey, didn't she have a lot to say? And I think she uh, did it in a very professional manner. You know, it's her side and their side, and then it's the truth. But if you will, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Did I say hit that notification bell? Beat that notification bell and make those awesome comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.